It's the 1st of April when I'm recording this, so I just want to ask, what stupid shenanigans have you come across today on the, some, the amazing April Fools, or what have you come across on your last April Fools, depending on when you're watching this? Hopefully it's not someone pretending to be a Karen or a Kevin. Hopefully it was just some fun shenanigans. But hey, welcome to Completely Stupid, the show about stupid people doing completely stupid things. I'm your host, the Australian Idiot, and let's get into the clips. So the story behind this one is that the person who's behind the camera, their car alarm was going off apparently all night according to the old lady here. According to the person behind the camera, this old lady in the morning went all the way over to her, apartment's com her apartment in the complex, which is on the other side of the building, so it's less likely she's going to be able to hear a car alarm going off. Apparently was knocking aggressively on her door, and then when the doors open, apparently was aggressively either speaking or aggressively yelling about the car alarm thing to the neighbor. That's what I'm gathering from what's the story is being told here. So yeah, anyhow, this escalates with the uh, older white, the older lady deciding to call the cops on this one because apparently uh, a crime's occurred because the car alarm was going off all night. Here's a clip. You're lying, y'all. So this lady came to, my, came to my door telling me my car is going off, right? Now she's calling the police. Going off all night. Okay, how will I know that? You're a Karen. Karen, I found a Karen, guys. I found a Karen. You sound stu stupid. I can't wait till the police get here, bro. Because you're not going to sit here and harass me. Uh, for my like, car. I'm not harassing anybody. You are harassing me. You came to my door. You okay? And you said it in the worst way you could possibly say it. Girl, bye. Is that the police? When I asked the door if that was her Hello, are you the police? Come on. My name is Holly. Holly, you can call me Hollywood. No, you ain't gonna girl bye. You ain't get there for me. Hi, how are you? Okay, so. I live in 107, in the back, right here. Okay. So if you stand in my room, I can get through. I can cut my alarm back home. You will not hear my alarm. And the only reason it would, only reason it will go off, is because it's really sensitive. I don't know if something hitting it, the tree is hitting it, but like if what, anything what hit alarm it, are you talking about? my car alarm, okay. it was going off. I guess it was going off all night, and apparently it was unlocked. So I don't know if somebody was trying to get in there, but you know it's a car. If, if somebody's trying to get in your car, it's gonna go off. Is so, it no, it's my white Acura, but, um, so I didn't, I can't hear it. Like, if you go in my room, I can't hear Jack. Like, I'm in the back. I can't hear nothing. Okay. She came to my door, very hostile, saying hi. And, no, yeah, you did. Oh, oh, yeah, you did. Oh, yeah, you did. Anyways, um, yeah, you can't hear it. So she came to my door. She was like, is that your, is that your car going off? And I, my mom said no, because she didn't know, like, could my car ever go off. <laughs> um, then she was like, I was like, is a white Acura? Oh, yeah, mine. She was like. Oh, well, can you cut it off? If she would say that, that's it. Cool. She's like, it's been up two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, and you're doing disturbance. I'm going to call the police on you because, like, she's went off. She okay. went off. I'm a very, like, I'm a young person. Slammed the door okay. in my face. I slammed the door in my okay. face because okay. you was yelling. Here's, here's, here's what <laughs> it's a car. I'm the only one here right now, okay? Yeah. I don't need you guys talking to each other right now. I need to see to figure out. No, no, I got you. I got you. You're, you're fine. You're fine. But. Let me try to figure this out so that way I can help you instead of it escalating further. You know what I'm trying to say? So just give me one second. Some people are just okay. like not. Okay. So, like so, you could, she could so, easily so, say, so, huh? Like I say, I'm here to keep the peace unless a crime occurred. Did did a crime occur? No. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. What cr my car? Okay. Going off? I'm in the bed. I'm asleep. Like let me tell you. Okay. All right. Is it, is there anything else that you need to tell Why me? Why she far? still talking? I'm about to go talk to her that, and figure out her no, side. No, I'm trying to figure out. It's like. Okay. Is a black. I don't want because she said something about being white, okay. so I don't want to put no race in it. I'm not a race person. No, no, no I got you. Uh, yeah, um, so I don't like I, that. I don't so, like that. So, did that. So, okay, I don't like so, that. So now that I got another officer here, if you don't mind going, I'll stick to him. okay. I think the first thing I just want to push here, like, I get you want to tell your story and you feel like she's gonna just lie and all that, and you want to just make sure the cop gets your story. But when he told you like, hey, I'll get to you. I want to talk to you guys separately. You kind of just stop for a moment and let the police officer do their thing. You're only going to frustrate them more with this entire thing if you continue to annoy them and continue to try and push your end of the story. Like, I get it. It sucks if in this case. 
But yeah, just, just maybe don't do that. On the second thing, A, I'm so glad that most new car alarm, mo most new cars don't have those car alarms that go off when you touch the car. Like, it was a good idea on the surface, those type of car alarms, but ultimately, over time, it's just really terrible. And also, well, doesn't the car alarm just, like, like it's from the sounds of it, it sounds like the car alarm flicked off on multiple times, something touched the car to flick it back on again, and it looped on that all night, which, interesting to say the least, I've not seen a car alarm do that. I worked in an undercover car park for quite a while, and occasionally car alarms will go off, and they will turn off after a while, and then you just don't hear that car alarm go off again most likely never. In his next clip we got a Karen who lacks the little bit of patience she needed to just wait for this person to pause what they're doing to help them. Hey, there's a camera right there. I don't play those games. There's a camera right there. Leave me alone and do there's not follow. There's a camera follow. right there. And I'm not playing. Y'all working today and don't hey, want to do y'all hey, job. I'll, what? I'll get a supervisor. What is his name? I, I just got, I just started here like a month ago. I just started here a month ago. I'm not sure what anyone's name is. Here if you want, here if you want. Do you know where a manager is? She needs a manager. Yeah. Her ass tweaking. She didn't even give Nigga, me a I ain't never tweaking. to stop. You got me I confused. I literally get what I need so I can continue with my order. She had a question. You didn't even give me a chance to answer your question. Because you you assume you have a you funky ass attitude, attitude off the shelf and, and I'm not dealing, dealing with that shit. You, you can leave. Go to make Meyer. easy money. Go to Meyer. Get a real job. I am at my job, no, you are not, but you're I work not at 24-7. This ain't a job. What? This ain't but a job, it is, I wake up and I clock the What the f*** it ain't? What the f*** it ain't? What do you do? Besides harass people. No, I'm not harassing. But you are. Excuse so me. Excuse me. How hard is it for you to give me your name? I don't want to. I don't Why want not? you to have my name. What I will you follow you around to your supervisor. But you won't. I'll wait for you to call me. Because you don't want to give me your name. Because you don't want to give me your name. Because you don't want to give me your name. Because you don't want to give me your name. Because I got my bond money in my pocket. I'm working. What are you going to do? Oh, I remember it. Very well. Hey, Kelsey. I've been on this earth Kelsey, 43 years. My child. Do you think you can get a manager? What? Do you think you can get a manager? Do you think you can get a manager? Yeah. What happened exactly? What happened exactly? She, I was walking past, I was walking really fast to grab some soldiers. She asked me if I had met you. So I got my part, I turned around. She instantly had an attitude, started going off. Woo, 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 you weren't even gonna stop. I'm, ma'am, I literally just stopped my car so I can grab Folger. Yeah. It's in my car. Yeah, just doing, just in the middle of your job. Yeah, pretty much. so my thing is, if I had an attitude, I would never answer you from the beginning. I would've just kept going. Yeah. But I stopped, that was the thing. So she assumed that I was gonna keep going because I was when well, like, you really I wasn't. Was no, I was yeah. speed walking. So obviously, I'm gonna. It's gonna look like I'm going really fast. I do it sometimes too. Yeah. So <laughs> she just assumed that I wasn't going to stop and answer her question. That's not me. I answer anyone's questions if they have a question or need help. It was just but a situation she, that happened really bored. fast. Huh? It was just a situation that happened really fast. Literally, she's bored as hell, and I don't give a damn. So it is what it is. <sighs> They're handling that right now. Yeah, I was just kind of sweeping when it down. happened. The whole, okay. the whole Why do you have both earbuds in? Oh, sorry. So, I'm part of the problem. When he got loud and jazzed with me, I stopped this young man and asked him to talk to him. You're talking to this one, we'll give me a name. Okay, so uh, with this one here, I'm more liable to believe the person who's working, the person who's currently doing the, I'm assuming is online shopping, doing shopping for someone else who's going to come and collect that shopping later. Because I understand the sheer amount of restrictions you have on how quickly you have to do that type of thing. It may be slightly different to how they operate in America, but over here in Australia, it's kind of like one of those things where you're measured on how fast you can do other people's shopping. It's like one of those weird things. So when people are moving from section to section, they will be speed walking. They'll be walking slightly fast. They'll be doing it safely because you're pushing a big metal trolley thing. So if it hits someone, it's gonna do some damage. But when you ask someone for help who's pushing one of those things, you've got to give them a moment to stop, turn around and hear your question. Instead of the moment that you tell them, ask them the question, you don't give them a chance to take a moment to stop what they're doing. You just start going off at them. You cause problems like this. 
Though the worker should have probably maintained a certain level of professionalism because he's probably going to get in trouble for the fact that he let off an F-bomb at the customer, that can get you in some shit. It, regardless of the reasons behind it, regardless of if it's warranted or not, you shouldn't do it. It gets you in trouble either way. I don't know. It's a sucky situation. Here we head down under as your local bogan is very upset at a couple of people riding their bikes who rode around a, mo a roundabout weren't going as fast as they humanly possibly can because you know they're bicycles they're not going to go as fast as a goddamn vehicle and this guy's upset that he had to slow down to get around the bicycles. Why would you go then? You know you're on a bike. Think logical. You can't get around. Well, let me talk. You can't get around the roundabout fast enough. So logical. As so, no, 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 in a car, you go 20 k's under the speed limit, you'll not, you'll, you'll get pulled over and lose your license. What about you guys? Right, okay. So what you're saying is, we should stop in the middle of a roundabout, so you don't have to give way to no, the No, I'm which saying, is the if you're incapable of applying to road rules like everyone else, Go to the side, and when it's there safe, no, it's like it's like crossing a road. Okay. If I cross a road, I go. I go. There is no minimum speed limit for a bicycle. See, that's bullshit. Well, so that's where you, you need what? to use your brain and be a human part of no, no, society. No, no, no. Well, maybe you should work on some comprehension I'm skills I'm and learn how to write and contact your member of parliament right. if you've got an issue with the laws, mate. Little pleb. Little pleb. Follow the rules. We're following the rules. So you don't have to give way to the right. You want us to break the rules. No. So you don't have I to give want way you to, to the right. Logical. And think no, 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 no. There's no logical. Well, well, maybe you should treat us as human beings us. instead of swearing well, at us, so threatening our lives with your motor vehicle. Red light, and you can clearly see they've gone past the red light. Are you going to continue? What do you mean? Up again. Up your block. Okay. No, genuinely, you did. I didn't quite get that. One. Okay. So I see. You are allowed to go. All right. You are. Yeah. No, so no, no, you're no, 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 you've no, got no. to give way to the right. So yeah, you've just acknowledged that we had the right of way, and you came into the roundabout, right, right. threatening Mate, our shut lives. The fuck up. No, you're I'm not going to shut up. You've been quiet. You're scared. Shut up. At least you can talk to me like a man. You're a <laughs> shut up. You can tell you don't even work. Look at you. You can. How Look can you tell you that I don't work, mate? Bro, I can tell from the personality. You could probably go home, and you're a vegan. At least, he, at least he has a decency to let me talk and then speak and you just straight cut me off because you can't handle your emotions because you're a little I don't, I really don't want to call name calling is helping, is it? Let's be honest. <coughs> what's, okay, what's name calling got to do with this? Well, you so know. you've got to be a little and worry about no, my name calling. No, 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 no. Uh, I uh, thought we were resolving to name calling, right? So, what? I'm having a conversation with him and you come and pick your little times when you can talk because you're uncomfortable to be a man. So when you want to be a man, speak to me. Okay, well how about you shut the f*** up, get off the road, get back in your car. I ain't gonna do s***, but you can't tell me what to do. Anyway, look, I don't know this gent, we just rode up behind him. You, you, and probably you've got a nice meal waiting for you at home. So have, well I've got to no, make just, mine, but I, I don't want to hit one of you guys. If I hit one of you guys, that's going to so there's a, there's a pedal oh, you can't pull I mean? to break, you can be use that so you, you can't don't be hit a man and f***ing let me speak, but I'll let you speak. That's what I mean. I don't want to have a conversation with a little boy. F***ing fine. You're that much of a useless person. Right, but I'm just trying to have a conversation. No, because the last time I had oh, my life, the last life. time I had my life threatened by a, a motor vehicle on the road, I, was, I, I couldn't you? take police action because how? I didn't have footage. So I'm having footage now. Yes, but how did I threaten you? <clears throat> Because you cut, you because, drove against the road rules into the roundabout. To us. You drove what do close you mean? to us. You did not give us the minimum one and a half meter clearance that you are required to Correct. by law. Because you slowed down. I, that's what I'm trying to Very explain okay, to so, you. So if you a, slowed down in the X. If okay. someone went five k's so, off the whole road, they'll get pulled over. If a large bus, which is, which goes slower around the roundabout. Up. Go There's slower. No do you do the same thing to them? And that's what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> Just know. because the law says that, man, use your brain as a human. A minute ago, you were saying that we should obey the law. Now you're whinging because we are obeying the law. So make up your no. mind. I'm trying to say be a human and i was just treat us like a oh, human dude. and don't put our lives at risk dude, i slow you down if i didn't treat you like a human i would have drove you over think straight if i didn't treat you like a human i'll come up and smack you but i haven't so be quiet with oh my goodness man you know if you've been assaulted you will know how this normally turns out no one comes over and talks 
correct? So I should be thankful that you're showing me the respect for not knocking me out. No, I'm trying to say is I'm not going to assault you, so stop putting your guard up. Just because I'm upset, you're being a little... That's I'm sorry, you drove around the roundabout in a dangerous manner, you drove close to us, you rode your horn, you wound down yes. your window, you yelled at yes. us, yeah. you then pulled yeah. over instead of driving on and getting on with your life. I want why to speak. would I why would I not feel threatened? I'm not even I don't even come here to speak to you. I started speaking to him and then you just sat there quiet and then when when you when you felt comfortable enough to say something because you're a little said something. I don't even want to have a conversation with you. I want a conversation with him because you're acting, you, I can't have a conversation with you. You're defensive. As and I'm also concerned for his safety, so I'm staying here so there's a witness to whatever you do. Yes, but you don't need to talk. You don't need to put little kid nipplets. Be an adult. When you can talk, you talk. Correct? Because you're displaying your adulthood here right now, the way you're acting. The way you've pulled oh, over oh, and you've gotten out with your little tantrum because you had to slow down and lost two seconds in your journey on the way home. No, because I'm trying to pull over so I can stop getting f***ing upset and actually understand your reasoning now. Because most people will yell and just f*** off. I want to know your reasoning. Well, because we are legally entitled to ride yes. on the road as we did, as we were. I approached the roundabout, I indicated the direction of my travel with my right arm as I am legally obliged to do so. When I entered the roundabout, there was no other vehicles on the roundabout, I had clear right of way. I entered the roundabout, as I was turning around the roundabout, you came up to the roundabout, you're just ignoring, oh so f*** the law. So hang on, you can't have it both ways. Which, do you want us to obey the law or do you want us to disobey the law? I want you to be a human. No, 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 Law. Round about at like two kilometres and you slow down, you're gonna get hit. No, you're not, not if people you're obey the road, the rules of the road. I promise you, do you know how much crackheads live around here? They're just gonna see you with that little cyclist. As opposed to the over. highly rational people like yourself. Yeah. Did I run you over? No. Have I oh, thank you for not killing me today. Yeah. That anyway, is very magnanimous of you. Get in your car and drive home. Come on. Are you sure? Are we okay to go? Do, do you want to go have a little boxing just to show you a little no, 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 no. No, no. I want to get, get that's in your point. car and drive yeah, The home. more you say that, I'm going to do anything. Because I'm allowed to park here. I'm allowed to. I'm I know. Really good. I'm not stopping You're actually you. too close to an intersection to park there legally. Yeah, you are. So, honestly, cool. it, might, it might be an cool. idea to move. Cool. Okay, I'm fine with you, but... No, no, no. I came here to have a conversation, and you want to be like you, this. You keep filming while I phone the police, because... Yeah, phone the police. I've got fed up long enough now, and we've tried to be rational. And How you I... want you want us to break the law, but then you don't want us to break the law. No, okay. I just want to speak to you. All right. I don't no, know. I'm dying. Can you not? Dying. Yeah, call the cops. I don't care. I, just don't interrupt. I just want to know. Like, if I'm a driver and I saw someone, you know, I'm like, okay, this is part of the law. There's, they're doing the right thing, but I feel like right now what I'm doing is dangerous. Do you continue? What I was doing was not dangerous. I was riding as per the laws of the road. I really hope we don't, but you never know. We might be lucky. I'm sorry, mate, but you're a moron. Okay, I get it. You might get pulled over if you're going lower than the legal, if you're going like 10, 20 k's lower than the actual legal speed limit. Okay, there's a few things to that one. A lot of people do that anyway, regardless of that. I can tell you, I drive around my area a lot. It happens very often and it's very, very frustrating, but it's very uh, unlikely. But the bigger thing here is that if you do, if you have to slow down because you can't get around a bike rider who's riding their bike on the side of the road and you have to you have to slow way down in order to wait until you can get around them you're not going to get pulled over and lose your license for that because everyone understands even the police even the laws have this little thing that bike riders you have to give them the minimum of one meter if it's less than 60 k's and 1.5 meters if it's more than 60 k's per hour and if you're unable to give that room to get around them at that point in time, if you can't do it safely, then you just have to slow and wait until you can't get around them. It's not illegal to slow down and go lower than the speed limit when you're trying to wait for a safe opportunity to get around a bike. And you trying to be here like, no, 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 just because you have the right of way, no one was else, in the, no one else is on the right roundabout when you entered the roundabout. You have to wait for me to come through because I'm the motor vehicle. You're the person on the bike. That's not how that works, buddy. Get it through your fixed goal. 
These are people who are also allowed to use the road too, and you gotta give them consideration for that. They're not gonna be as fast as you, but you also need to safely get around them. If you can't safely get around them, it's okay to not go the speed limit when you're waiting to safely get around bike riders. It's okay to go slow when people when bike riders are in front of you because you can't safely get around them. That's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. Having this big hissy fit because that happened is just completely mentally stupid. Grow the hell up, mate. Seriously. <laughs> Road ruses in Australia frustrate me sometimes. Can you tell? <laughs> is Karen who's decided to bring her dog onto the plane. Now she is following some of the rules that come with this, but ultimately something occurs that caused her to be kicked off. And her reaction to that is, uh... An interesting one to say the least. Because my dog was on my lap. We'll have a conversation in the jetway. Why? I Grab your stuff and come with me, ma'am. I'm not going to ask you again. Just grab your stuff and come with me. You're kicking me off this. You're going to put me on another plane. Ma'am, I need you to get your oh, stuff. Oh, no, 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 no. Honey, we're about to fight then. You don't want that. Because I didn't do anything to you guys to make me 12 hours late for my destination. Way. My dog was sitting on my lap. I put him in the bag. He's in Don't the worry bag. about it. I'm going to refund your ticket. You can go all southwest. Let's go. Bye. Because you couldn't let my dog sit on my lap. Yeah, let's go. Thank you. All of you. Okay. I am. Shut the. Hey. Oh. 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 Turn your oh. phone off. Oh. Right now. Who did she hit with Why is he recording me? Because it matters. Anybody can record anything. Yeah, yeah. Anything. Oh, you anybody just struck a patch with the yeah, bottle. Okay. okay, that's fine. You talk to APD with him. You. No problem, man. Who did she just strike with the bottle? The guy that's recording me with like his you. cell phone. That's who I threw it at. Calm down. Calm down. You asked. I'm telling you. Calm, calm down. down. You guys have been nothing but that's rude. Fine. Calm down. That's fine that you guys are rude, but I need to calm down. There's rules. There's fly. rules, Dogs and I followed them, and, and I put him in yeah. there. And you guys still drove asking. up. Nobody acting this way flies on a flight with us. Okay, f you. Okay. Eat out of my way. Wow. Well, I want to find out, ma'am. Hold on. You Go told on me to get off your the... plane. Then get the f out of my way. Just what you're going today? Yeah. You can't go through. Just your bag, ma'am. Just your bag. Was anybody hit back there with that bottle? Yes. I'm go find out. All right. Right. Why are they recording me? That's their right. It, that's their right. Mm -hmm. And Everybody it's my right to tell them to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Not throw anything at anybody. Yeah. Really? You call APD? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you find out who I'm sorry, guys. When it comes to rules with pets on planes, there's a lot of complications to it. I've looked into this before for previous clips that are similar to this, and ultimately it's a whole convoluted mess that you're just best off asking, calling up the airline, finding out this ahead of time, and then when you're there on the day, double checking again, making sure that they are aware that you're doing this and that you have been told that you're fine to do it as long as you do X, Y, and Z. And ultimately, if you do that, you should be fine. But it also seems like in this situation, she's also just not carried herself in an appropriate manner, which has just made sure that she got booted off. Especially after she has the choice of like, oh, this person's recording me. Let me just peg my water bottle at them for some dumb reason. Because, you know, people don't think, because she wasn't thinking with her brain in that moment. She was thinking with, I got something in my hand. I don't like you. I throw thing at you to hoping to hurt you, which is completely completely ridiculous. This Karen gets kicked off a plane and absolutely loses it to the point where it takes 10 police officers in order to get her out of there. Oh my god. Oh 
Yo. Yo. Oh, why they carrying her? Damn. Why they? Why they doing all that? Not so tough now, are you? <laughs> I mean, this is just like absolutely crazy that it even got to this point where it required multiple police officers not to just extort her, escort her out. No, 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 to pick her up off her feet and carry her to the cop car because she's that it, like she's refusing to cooperate with them to that degree. Insane. Another plane, another set of Karens losing their minds, screaming at other passengers. I mean, what more is there to say at this point? By the sounds of the actual airplane itself, it sounds like they're currently flying, which... Yeah, that just sucks. Like, genuinely, anyone else in this flight is just going to be like, well, that's uh, unfortunate, because there's literally nothing that can be done right now unless someone decides to do a citizen arrest and sit on them for the rest of the flight. <laughs> that wouldn't happen. I don't know, like, what, what, what even happens in this type of situation when a passenger loses it in the middle of a flight? This Kevin becomes a wild dog on the plane, and then when he faces consequences, he's not too happy about that. I mean, buddy, what else do you expect is going to happen when you start just doing whatever in the world that is there? Like, is there something wrong with you? Is that why this happened? Or you genuinely just have a screw loose in your brain and you thought it was a great idea to lose it like this? The caption says it's because of something racist. Unfortunately, we can't really tell for that. It just, we see the aftermath of you losing it, which uh, means cops escort you out. Huh, funny that. The story being told with this clip is that apparently one of the flight attendants bumped into this mother for one reason or another, one way or another, and demanded that she put her seatbelt on. Things escalate and it ends up getting to the captain, whom orders that she is to be get to get off the plane. 
This is when some another flight attendant comes to to, inter, to tell the family these news, and the father starts recording this clip to ultimately have a very interesting thing happen on camera. Okay, I need to just sit down and put my seatbelt on. Fine. She said, "You need to get up." I said, "Do you need that?" She said, "Is there going to be a problem?" I said, "No, there's not going to be." I didn't get aggressive for her. I didn't say when he, the young man, that said I got aggressive. He wasn't even there. He was all the way in the bed. I didn't do anything. Okay, I'm not. I wasn't here. I'm not saying what you did, but um, when the captain's made that request, I don't have. I don't have any override. How can the captain make a request for something that he didn't see? He didn't know. They're going to offer orders. Like all of these people on the plane, I didn't do anything. No one did anything. Do you have your belongings? And we had we had witnesses. I just want this to be known that she has a newborn. You're putting her off the plane due to the negligence of one of and unprofessionalism of one of your staff members. She did absolutely nothing. No, yes, no, that's absolutely wrong. You weren't even here. Absolutely wrong. I didn't do anything. I don't have to do anything. Who are you talking about? Some, somebody who saw this and heard it, I hope y'all speak up because it's wrong. Everybody who's been around here who know that when this this fellow over here came to get up, he came to get up, and we were getting up out our seat to move. She said, "Can you move?" We said, "Are we going to move?" She said, "Can you give us space to get out?" It is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. You should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed of yourself. You weren't here, and yet, yet you took you took you took the opinion of somebody else over somebody carrying a child, a baby. You have the wrong impression of me. Number well, guess what? You gave me that impression. You earned that impression. You earned it. You earned it. You earned it. This is what's happening. Trust me, you will be hearing from us on the on the legal level. We all got we all got legal backing. Lawyers, not dealing with no dummy. Makes no sense. I hope you sleep well tonight, brother. I hope you do. Thank you for speaking up, sir. Thank you for speaking up. She didn't even bump into her. She didn't even bump into her. She asked that because she knew. So we could get out the seat. Then she told her, sit down, have a seat, put your seatbelt on. To a mother with a seven week old child. Told her to sit down, have a seat, buckle your seatbelt. It's ridiculous. Catherine, I want you to know you have a very impatient, unprofessional, and negligent staff. That's you right there. That's you. Now, see that? That's her. That's her right there. Well, we don't have no choice. They put us off. Look at that. You have all your American Airlines. Look at that. Look, okay, there might have been some genuine issues that occurred prior to the recording here that might have happened, but to me personally, any of those genuine issues that would genuinely require someone to hop off the plane, uh, first off, it's a mother with a young kid, it's just like... Is it a big enough issue to warrant kicking them off the plane, especially considering they've got a young child whom it's probably not worth doing that type of thing with? And secondly, you completely lost my sight. Like, I completely weren't happy with how they treated the situation, especially after one of the flight attendants knocks the phone out of his hand. That's just a step too far. Like, you don't do that. If they're recording you, yeah, it sucks, it's annoying, and whatever else you want to talk, call it. But knocking someone's phone out of their hand is not cool. That's assault. I hope you realize that. It genuinely sounds like with this clip that something happened that probably shouldn't have, but ultimately was over-exaggerated by one of the parties, which has caused this person to be kicked off. And even though they chose to hear her out, which is an interesting thing to do, especially when you're in a position where it doesn't matter what the story was, you're under a strict request to get them off the plane, and that's that. So, yeah. I, this just entirely sucks. Just wholeheartedly sucks. Here we have an impatient Karen who's trying to get to a connecting flight, and when she find, when she starts causing an annoyance, one of the flight attendants decided to uh, set her straight. You have an hour, it's not that hard! 
believe me. I'm not gonna have you. I'm not gonna have you make the, all these other people get mad. Now call over that gate, and I won't let them let, let you get on the plane if you don't settle down. I understand. I I live here. I work here. I know how big the airport is. Yes. Do you do you live here? Do you also know that our flight was was canceled twice? Like well, I don't know about that one. I know this one's leaving at four o'clock. It's three o'clock. You have one hour to get there. And if you don't settle down, I'm going to have somebody take you off this aircraft, but it's not going to be going to your next one. You understand me? You're not the only people on this aircraft. Look, I get it. Yeah, it is, it, it is stressful dealing with connecting flights, especially when the first one gets delayed by a time frame. It sucks. And... I think there's no way to sugarcoat that. It genuinely does. And if you're not good with handling your own anxiety or you just naturally have high levels of anxiety, the panic is definitely going to be there. But being impatient like this, trying to get out of the plane quicker is not going to help anyone, not even yourself. Heck, it's probably going to cause you more problems. So you're best to be patient. And then the moment you get out of the plane and get into the massive open halls, that's probably where you start running. I don't know. Here we have a Kevin complaining about someone apparently taking up the entire luggage overhead space and goes off at a flight attendant when he tells him to just calm down, we'll deal with it, and threatens to call the police on the flight attendant. I'm pretty sure we know all this where this is going. Luggage up there. It's, it's luggage up there now. You don't have any space. Yeah. I got you. Now there's no space. He's got no space. He has no space. He put his luggage up here. Look. No, you point the you're pointing your Nothing, finger. Nothing, sir. That's okay. Bell's on. Please be seated and fasten your seatbelt. I'm just going to ask you a question here. Is this like your first time taking a flight? Do you not understand that flight attendants will literally come through after everyone settled down and is on to play Jenga with people's overhead luggage? To just make sure to get everything to fit nicely. If there's bags that haven't quite gotten up there because they ran out of room, they'll play Tetris to find a way to get it in there. I've seen it multiple times over. It's like one of the things they're really good at. Here we have a Kevin causing a nuisance on the plane and finds himself in handcuffs because he just doesn't want to sit down and just not be a nuisance on the flight. You don't got it! You don't got it! Sit down. Sit down. Right now. I'm asking you. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. I've had about enough of you. Sit down. Sit down. Don't get up there. I'm gonna explain this really easy for you. If you don't sit, if you don't sit down right now, you're gonna spend the rest of this flight in handcuffs. You will stand you. No, sit down, put your seats on. on. If you get up again, if you get up again, you're gonna spend the rest of the cycle. Sit down. Sit down. I got it. No. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Stop resisting. Is it really that hard to just mind your own business, sit down and chillax on a flight? Is that really that difficult that you had to get you you kept pushing back against this police officer to find yourself getting zip tied just so you don't go anywhere? Like, seriously? It's that hard? Wow.
fun. In this clip, we got a Karen who's uh, having a bit of a meltdown at an airport when she's told like, hey, uh, the move up, you're next, go on. She decides to have a full on meltdown in front of everyone else, complaining about how much she's the victim of all of this and how she's only being picked on because she's not being protected. I don't know. No, entitlement is what you're doing. Thinking oh, that you can come on in my heel. Can you move up, please? Oh, see, no! I get the chance to do it when I want to do it. Don't ball up your fist at me, baby. You got the right one. Come. You really got the right one. See what you call the line. No, you are entitled. You are the ones who are entitled. Hey, I'm not sure where it's going to go. I don't know where you can sit. It's not spirit. It's not spirit. I'm not feeling protected. I am sick of it. Yes, I Either that, either she's so self deluded that she's unable to admit when she's actually in the wrong or when she's done something wrong, or she's actually having a mental breakdown in this moment. You know what? I'd probably throw out a penny and say there's most likely both of them. She probably is self deluded, but is also having a melt mental breakdown because she's unable to handle being wrong. So here we got a Karen who was doing cartwheels and playing around with a bunch of kids prior to the flight or on the plane. I'm not 100% sure because it's not made clear when in the timeline this was happening while she was also drinking alcohol. Ultimately, she would get kicked off of this flight because his, she looks intoxicated according to the flight attendant. Here's the clip. No, you can walk away. You cannot come on this aircraft. You are shaking and I can see it. And because you guys are jeopardizing the safety of this aircraft right now. Okay. So I'm threatened by both of you. Well, that's unfortunate. Let's go. The I'm sheriff's department is on the Now you hear from my home. I told you, I didn't want this thing to get escalated, but you wanted to know. No, go ahead. Want I want a sobriety test. I am sober. I work with children. I've been Let's doing cartwheels and okay. back then. You need to get out of here. Okay. You do. Otherwise, I'm going to kill you. So you are reporting, right? It's not going to help you. Yeah. The reporting, you, reporting is not going to help you. are wasting the situation. No, reporting will help. Okay. You, got, you, are, you are wasting it. What behavior did you see? You cannot step control. any closer to me. I'm not. I stepped to the side. What uh -huh. behavior did if you, you see If you step mine? any closer to me, we're going to have problems. I'm not stepping closer. What behavior of mine did you see? What behavior did I see? Yeah. You are flipping all over the ground. You can't, you, you're engaging, you're loud, you want attention from everybody. All, all of us, you're, the whole entire crew saw it. All of us are in agreement that you flipping cannot Flipping on the ground, you mean the car wheels I was doing with the children that I met on the flight? As I was watching you drink your alcohol. Like I and said, I, I did mean, have one glass of wine. Right, and so because you've admitted it, I'm not going to allow you to come on this aircraft today. So anybody that's had one glass cannot get onto this No, line? anybody who's exhibiting behavior of being intoxicated is not allowed to come onto an aircraft. Do I that's seem intoxicated to you right now? Yeah, you do. Because you aren't following any sort of instruction that any of us are asking you to do. Because I have kids at home that I'm waiting to get back to. Well, that's unfortunate. It is. It is. Because you should have been behaving yourself up in the, the, and you should have been behaving yourself here. You should have been listening to him. So that's. No, the, no, you made your decision before we walked up. Right, because her behavior. No, no, right. Right, because her behavior was that of somebody who appears to be intoxicated. I, I didn't realize that you were an expert. I don't have to be. I don't have to be. I have, I have guidelines that we follow in our manual and you can actually well, look it up in the, the FAA.gov. Somebody is there. And she's recording me and so I want that deleted. No, so, somebody will hey, be there. Not gonna, she's, she's recording me and that's also against FARs. That's FARs. also against the F Federal Aviation Regulation. Okay. Say that you have to have my permission to be filming me. You know that, right? 
Yeah. Okay, let's so, go. I want I want law enforcement to deal with both of them, yes, and please. I want that to be deleted immediately. You can't make that demand, but they. I That's I can. Okay. I, I, I am not intoxicated. Your inability to walk away is saying that you are. It's the exact opposite, but. Okay. I think the first thing I want to point out is the whole you can't record me nonsense that this person was trying to pull at the end of the clip. It ultimately depends on a few different factors. If we're on the plane directly, yes, in theory, you can ask that because it would be a recording that is, uh, I would say, it doesn't isn't protected by your First Amendment as much as what recording in a public place is. But here they're outside of the actual plane itself. They're on the boarding tube. So it would more depend on what airport they're at and whether it's a government ran airport or a privately owned pet airport. It will depend on how those laws will be at play. Ultimately, though, that's not what we're here for. We're here for the other bit of this. And uh, if I'm completely honest... I'm more willing to side the flight attendant here because yes, there would be these things where you have a bunch of guidelines on what to do about intoxicated people and how to pick someone who might possibly be intoxicated. Now that's the thing, might possibly be intoxicated because some of the actions that intoxicated people will exhibit might also come from, might get exhibited by people who also have some form of mental disability. But usually those people who have those type of mental disabilities usually have someone else with them can actually, that can actually explain that, hey, no, nah, I'm sorry, they're not intoxicated. This is just, they've got some mental disabilities. I'm sorry about that. And yeah, clearly here there is no form of mental disabilities, as well as the flight attendant here has seen this person actively drinking whilst being loud, obnoxious, and cartwheeling around with a bunch of kids either prior to the flight itself or on the flight, on the actual plane itself. I'm not 100% which one's which because they don't make it clear in the timeline here. But ultimately, I can see why this has happened happened and considering that this person's refusal to cooperate with the entire situation and just like be far more understanding like okay yeah fair enough i do seem intoxicated i can tell you i'm not but hey fair enough and potentially move for the next flight and it is sucked that you got kids who are waiting for you to get your flight and go back home but in this situation here, you've shown yourself to be potentially intoxicated based upon the guidelines that employees are given to look out for when it comes to refusing intoxicated people. So it is what it is. Maybe next time you'll learn to just like be more cooperative when these type of things happen because you might it might turn out they might see that actually no you don't seem intoxicated you're willing you're willing to work with me to figure this stuff out instead of just outright refusing and just being an asshole clip is a lot to be completely honest there's a lot of moving parts to do with this story here and requires a lot of things so i think the base to start us off here is that we're 12 minutes before this plane is set to take off and the people who've gotten here their tickets have literally just been given away to someone else as they were as they were lining up going to go on the gate themselves so now we've ended up in this section here I'll go into more details after the clip, but I'll let you watch it first. I'm sorry, what? No, ma'am. I'm not going to. So you're gonna you're gonna give our seats out for them? I'm right here. I am right here, ma'am. Okay, I'm lower recording. Lower your tone. Oh, lower your tone. You're, you're giving me. our seats to them? Yes, I am. Okay. It is 12 minutes and 27 what seconds. What 12 minutes? It's still I'm open. Here. It's still open. We're still so open. We're here, I'm executive platinum. You, you know you that, that, right? One, two, three. I'm executive platinum here. That yeah, and you're giving and yet you're so giving my ticket to hold somebody on. else. So wait, wait, the plane is open. You just give me our seats out. Right. And you just as an executive platinum know the rules. No, right. you're giving our seats out. Yeah. Yes, we are. Yes. It's still open. You can it's let it in. If it was closed, you wouldn't be giving right? it to anybody else. If it was closed, no, you're you live be on Instagram. It. Just say it. American Airlines is giving our tickets out. They let them in. We are just behind them, and they give our seats out. Can you believe that? Are you? our kid and everything here some additional information to the story just so you have all the information apparently they were there two hours before the flight's time itself unfortunately there's only one tsa agent so it took over an hour to get through the line but then her disabled child needed to go use the restroom they still checked in apparently they still checked in within that before the 30 minute window 
but uh, that's what they're saying here. Anyhow, moving further into it with extra information here is that from what I can gather from other people is that there is a 15 minute domestic flight cutoff. The gate agents have a very short window to clear stand, like their standby passages waiting to go onto planes that have extra seats that are not been used either because the people who are meant to use those seats did not show up to their flight on time or B there's just extra seats that they just didn't end up filling so these the final 15 minutes before departure is used to get any extra people to fill up the plane that are waiting for a flight at some point beforehand and if you fail to get there before that 15 minute window your seat must be given might be given away and from what we can tell here is that they were in the line and the people in front of them got given their tickets like, because they're in the line of extra people who need to get on a plane. And unfortunately, their tickets got given away, which is a very unfortunate thing because the airline staff here are doing what they're meant to do in these situations. Like, they can't just take back the tickets they just gave to these people who are also looking for a fly. But yes, it also causes a massive inconvenience to these people here who brought those tickets and were meant to go on this flight. It's... From what I can gather with the comments of this, apparently it's made extremely clear that if you're not present at least 15 minutes before boarding, your seat will be given away to standby passengers. And once that ticket is confirmed to be someone else's, there is nothing you can do beyond that. So ultimately here, I say the people in this main situation here have done what I feel like was probably the right thing to do in this situation. They're rightfully upset and angry about the situation, but the staff are just doing their job. There's not much more that can be done about that. I feel like the biggest problem here is clearly that check-in section. How are you spending two hours in a check-in area? Like, I kid you not, I've never had to spend that long in a check-in area in my multiple different flights I've done over the years. And I was coming back from Melbourne a few two weekends ago the same weekend f1 was happening the monday i went back was the same day everyone who went to the f1 was going back everyone who went to the game expo was going back and trust me when i tell you this the airport was packed with hundreds upon hundreds of people but you know what happens here there are like 40 to 50 different self check-in areas like you go up to like these clusters of self point like hey you put in your name you put in the flight that you're meant to be taken or you put in the code that you have from your app or from your email it gives you your ticket it gives you your baggage slip to tap on slap on your bag itself and then you drop off your checked in bagging which there are like 20, 30, 40 different slots of self-automated one that you do yourself. And there's also multiple people from the airline who are redirecting people to any empty ones, redirecting people to the ones that have got people there to do it themselves, like the international ones, if that's necessary. Like it's clearly like the biggest problem here is that check-in area is absolutely garbage. You shouldn't be spending that long in the check-in zone. I, I've never experienced that length of a check-in and I've gone through airports in busy, busy time frames. Here we have a Karen neighbor who uh, is very interesting in their choice of doing things in this world. And this is a situation that has been building up over the past X amount of time. We're not really given a clear time frame, but it's like, it's a long enough time frame. It's happened over multiple weeks, yada, 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 where the neighbor's Karen's just had continuous issues with the kids of the person behind the camera here. Watch the clip. No, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to because I have everything on record. You can call and, the cops if you want, but before you call the cops, and you know what? You, you don't, you don't talk. Really no, you don't. No, Sharon, you should know her better than Sharon. to. Well, whatever your name is. You don't. Really she's saying that she's gonna press charges on my eight-year-old son. She's, I apologize to oh you. I said I'm sorry, and I'll say it again. And the only no thing I said to you charges. was, if you have an issue with my son, and come and address me. Okay. You're you weird. Look at who's yelling and You've all that. You've been talking to me for 20 minutes and I've had it. Congratulations. I snapped. I'm pissed. I'm the Yeah, you neighbor. snapped. Call me a Karen. Whatever you want. You are. Congratulations. You don't shut up. And you said, you I just want to have this on record. If anything happens to my son, because I try to speak to you, you said you're going to call my son, even though I apologize to you, even though I don't know if that happened. Your son. I have you on report saying it. Whatever your name is, whatever your job is, no. you said what you said. Your son. You said fine. what you said. Okay. That's, That's fine. Your We're going to call the cops. Our children be I said I apologize. And the only thing I said to your wife, or I don't know who this is, is 
if there's an issue, please come and address me. That's the only thing I said to you. Because no, 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 you didn't come. No, 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 no. You came and started with the whole attitude and you started telling me that I had an attitude with her. I just said that shit is weird. That's the only thing I said. You addressing a child? Listen, you fighting with a kid? You fighting with a little kid? You fighting with a little kid when I'm cleaning my house? And my son comes at me and telling me that you told him not to put a feet on your property? I never said that's that. That's what my son I said. That's fine. I want to see you record. And we're going to have the cops see that recording. So that the better school. be working. Even if I that did, better be working. Are you going to waste the cops' time? Even if I You did, told me. me nah, no. Because I you told, told me. She told me she that she's going to record. Me. No. If she genuinely threatened to call the cops to press charges on an eight-year-old, I think it's just deranged. Like, there's, I wouldn't be willing to have too much more of a conversation post that. I would just be like, okay, if that's how you think, if that's what you think you should do, you are clearly deranged, out of your mind, have no idea what you're doing. Like, that is some insane behavior to me, if I'm completely honest. But I suppose that is just normal in this day and age. Oh, you inconvenienced me, or your child did something a child does and inconvenienced me, or did a little bit of damage to, to something on my property. I'm going to call the cops on the kid. It's like, yeah, the cops would highly appreciate that one. Here's a crazy one for you. So, okay, this kid was allowed, this teenager was allowed to do a DoorDash order to the school's office by one of the sub, by her, their substitute teacher. Yeah, yeah, the thing gets delivered, it gets delivered to the office, and it turns out that either the principal or someone close to the principal that he refuses to name in the situation decide to help themselves to the food of this DoorDash. Yeah, here's a clip. Now, that's a whole different story than what you told me earlier. What's a whole different story? I've had because, DoorDash one other time. And but, was but, but when I asked you, had you DoorDash before, you told me, I said, no. I, I did not say that. You did. No, I did not. You yes, said, you, you said, has any of your teachers let you DoorDash before? And I said, no, a sub let me do it. And that's what happened today, too. I have the same sub, or I have a different sub in the same class, and I ordered DoorDash, and you ate my food. So you made us no, I'm moving forward. Yes, but that doesn't give him the right to eat my food. That's 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 the issue. Is done. Moving forward, going to be differently. We'll get your food. It's done. It's 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 not even. I should have had to wait, and I'm gonna miss some of my class waiting for this, waiting for my food to get here, and I haven't eaten all day. The issue is not even developed. I just want to know why he ate my food. <laughs> that's what I'm not gonna do. Yeah, you ate my food. That's what you did do. Go ahead and leave. You ate my food. I want my money back. I'm not paying for you to eat. First of all, I didn't eat it. So you what in, why is my food eaten? Why did my milkshake have a drink taken out of it? Why does this burger have a bite in it and just put back in the bag? And why is it missing a whole burger? Step out. Go calm down and then you come back. I'm not waiting. I don't have that much lunch period because I wasted it waiting for you. Go step out. Go. I'm not losing my food or my money or my time because of you. Lock. He took my food. There's a bite taken out of it, and it's missing a whole burger. There was a sip taken out of the shade. This is just normal cheeseburger. Look at this. Look, there are many things that could be said about door dashing to a school whilst you're in school as a student. There are definitely, I, I personally wouldn't do that and I think doing that is stupid. But that doesn't change the fact here that whoever it was here, whoever in the staff has done this, decided to take this DoorDash delivery for themselves and help themselves to food that they know they didn't order. Like, did they not come to think, it's like, oh, who ordered this? Let's find out. No, 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 no. Their first instinct is like, oh, free food. Let's eat it. it it's just like, the, the question I already have is, how did someone of this type of attitude get into this position of a school? Being either a principal, being the principal here who's done, or someone close to the principal who's high enough that the principal's wanting to cover their ass. And then furthermore, to the fact that they've used their authoritative stance in order to manipulate the situation to slightly adjust the story that the kid was apparently saying. And then when it turns out the kid's still not happy and he wants his money back, the principal's like, oh, step out for a second, calm down, then come back. It's like, buddy, 
someone just ate a good chunk, some of his food that he paid for. Uh, he wants money back for that food that was eaten by someone else. Like, do you not see the problem here? The, really? Are you that dumb? Like, I, I genuinely don't get the attitude being displayed here by the staff members. Three of the Astros, you lost in the World Series, and now what happened? You I'm, the I'm, all, one I'm the biggest, this is Josh's stick. I'm the biggest Astros fan in the world for six months. You lose in the ratings when the Astros win the World Series. What's now? Your Gulf Coast Regional Radio. The Josh in his, the Josh in his network. How do you know that? You don't listen. When did I say I don't listen? That's okay. your shtick. That's okay. your shtick. You say you don't listen. I've never okay. said I don't listen. Okay. Yeah. You clown. You're lying again. What am I lying you lied about? about that. Me calling my lawyers? I never said you. I said you. Oh, you didn't. Oh, you didn't. Oh, you didn't. You didn't. Hey, who oh, Seth and Mike and I. Oh, they're my great friends. Let me tell them why they suck. Who am I supposed to know who calls a lawyer? Well, then why would you say it? Why would you say I call my lawyer, Josh? This is the other thing about you. This is the other thing about Josh. This is what Josh does. Um, I'm going to pull a stunt. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Andrew, break here. Texans media rules where I know I'm gonna lose my credentials, and then I'm gonna claim that I'm surprised that I have my credentials pulled. You lie to your audience and then claim you have your credentials pulled because you're the most honest guy in history. You're a fraud. You know, I thought this was an argument over something to do with sports at first, but then it became more and more clear that both of these people either run podcasts or shows of some sorts and decide to have an in-person confrontation over something. I mean, there's probably people who are watching this who probably have more context or more knowledge about what's actually happening here. I don't exactly consider this to be a Karen thing because... Well, I, I don't. I just feel like it's just an argument between two people who are currently disagreeing. I don't know why this ended up in the Karen bin, but here we are. <laughs> Here we got a Karen who was supposed to have left the hotel 5.30 the previous afternoon. She decided not to and stayed overnight and when she gets called out in the morning by the manager of the hotel, she tries to say that she brought this reservation on her phone when the manager asks for the confirmation number since it's not in their system. Uh, the, the Karen decides to uh, deflect saying that she didn't do it through her phone and various other things. You're a Karen at work yeah, part. I to speak to a manager. I am a manager, ma'am. Do what you gotta do. Okay, we can walk you up. Or I can no, you're not going to walk me up to my room and show me my phone ma to ma prove to you that I have a reservation. Ma'am, you clearly stayed in the room past 5.30 last night. Yeah, I did, because I thought I had another book. You never booked another one, ma'am. Yes, I did. Okay, so there should and be no issue. And then you want me to show issue. you proof? Yes, so I can see it, because it's not in my system. And what if it's on my phone? How would it not? How many hundreds of dollars do you want me to pay you to look at my phone, to go to my room and look at my phone? Ma'am, you Doesn't paid seventy five dollars bit... yesterday. Yeah. To stay until five thirty. You did not leave at five thirty and you did not make another reservation. I did make a reservation. That's so that's, that's what I'm what saying. You're All you have on. to do is show you're me saying... the reservation, ma'am. All I'm asking but is for you to show me the confirmation walk number. Me to my room to show to have proof. In my yes, phone. because if I don't see First the proof, I can't allow you to stay in that room. There's internet, ma'am. All you have to do is connect to the Wi-Fi. All right, let's go. Okay. Let's go. I, I tried to come down here to smoke a cigarette, but is this funny to you? Um, am I laughing? I'm not laughing, ma'am. I came out to smoke a cigarette, and now you're saying, get out of our hotel and provide me money. I didn't say that at she all. She didn't say that. that. That's what you're insinuating. You're gonna that's go not, room, I'm making sure, you're sure proof. I'm making sure that you actually made a reservation because I already caught you in one lie when you said that you spoke with a woman here. There's no other woman besides me that worked yesterday. I did speak with a woman. You couldn't have yesterday afternoon spoke with a woman, ma'am. That's impossible. You want to go to my room and look for proof? I'm not That's looking for doing? proof. All I said was show me the reservation, confirmation number that you made. On. You just phone. said that you you said that you booked it on your phone. All yes. you have to do is show me the email confirmation number so I can pull it up in the system and see where the res reservation is because I don't see it. But if I don't see proof of a All new right, reservation and there's not one in let's my go. system, then I can't allow you to stay in that room, ma'am. So, okay, so now you're telling me that you're not going to allow me to stay in the room. If I don't have proof that you made another reservation to be in that room? Yep, yep. Then yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. You need to call somebody. Just, um, call, 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 no, call, no, no. Call, I'm not going to call nobody because yeah, yeah, I'm the manager, ma'am. Yeah, you do. You're not going to tell me you're going up to my room and showing me proof 
ma'am. No. If you made no. a reservation, no. it shouldn't no. be that no. hard no. for you no. to no. give no. me no. the confirmation. No, no, because that's what I'm about to do. Yeah, I'm just gonna call the police to escort you out, ma'am. That's fine, because. I can open the door so that you can get your things, but the police will come and ask no, you. No, you're not even giving me that option. You're being like crazy. How am I being? Ma'am, I'm like, talking you're to not you. staying another night. Ma'am. Oh, okay, that's fine. I'm talking to you as calm as I can be. All I did was ask for proof of the reservation. You're being crazy. How? You're telling me that I have to get out of my room How right now? Yourself? I didn't say. Right? Do you have proof of the reservation, ma'am? That's all I said. I don't know. You can go look at my phone, you can search, do whatever you want to do. Ma'am, search for what? All you have to do is pull it up. My phone isn't on. Just go. Just it's go to just my room. It's connected to the just internet. Go to my room. That's fine. I need to have a cigarette. If you want to go search my room, you can. I'm not searching your room, ma'am. All I need you to do is grab your phone and show me your confirmation number. It's not on. My phone is on. So let's go. So, ma'am, how did you book the reservation? You just said you booked it through your phone. Yeah, I did it last Okay, time, yeah. so all you have to do is show me the confirmation email that was sent to you. That's okay. it. If it's on there, that's fine. It's going, it should be in your email, ma'am. Okay. How okay. the fuck do you... Does this person work here? Yes, yes she does. does. Oh, okay. <sighs> yeah, I'm going outside real quick. You can go to my room and go search your room. I'm 99.9% .9 sure there was probably a way, way easier way of handling this entire situation than to just stay another night without actually paying for it. Like, if you needed to stay a few extra days because for some reason something came up that requires you to stay around a little bit longer, I'm sure if you went to the hotel lobby the day beforehand, before your checkout time, like, hey, uh, something's come up, I need to stay around for a few more days, is there any way I could just pay to stay a few more nights in the hotel? I'm sure they would have easily easily organize that for you and you would have had no problem. You may have had to switch rooms depending on things, especially considering how you managed to stay overnight and no one else went into that room and other things on those lines. Like, it seems like that they weren't a booked out hotel, but you could have actually asked and, hey, point out, like, something's come up, I need to stick around a little longer, can you help me just stay a few more days? Like, just, just do something instead of what you did, because that ain't right. It is kind of a large vehicle and they've also got a trailer attached to it, so of course, because you can't fit a car and a trailer in a normal car parking lot, they've gone across in a weird way taking up multiple car parking spaces because it's just what they've had to do. Anyway, this Karen's come out of the fuel station to go off at them for doing so. Good. Good, you're on TikTok. No. We have a Karen. Uh oh, she's getting a plate number now. Hang on. I don't give a Okay. We got yours too. We got yours too. You realize when you have a trailer, you're allowed to take up more than one space, right? That is not legally parked. You're right, it's not a legal park. Um, but another thing, you realize that having your headlights on is also not against the law. Okay, so you have to do my to turn it off and be considerate. You want to be a jackass and turn your brights on in my car. First of all, I'm not driving, so you don't have to be rude with me. You want to hit me? Go ahead. Sway at me. Ha have a good day, man. I mean... There is really nothing wrong with what they were doing. Yes, they, yes, it's annoying to have see a vehicle take up multiple car parking spaces, especially considering they got a trailer. It is annoying to see multiple car park spaces being taken. But a, this is at night time, so fuel station may not be as busy as usual at this point in time. And also, uh, where else do you think they're gonna park? They're, they're gonna park up blocking the road. They're gonna park up into a single car park and have the trailer stick out on the road. Like, what else do you think they're gonna park? They have to park in multiple car parks anyway regardless of where they go because the vehicle's now too long to fit in a regular car park because you know it's got a trailer attached to it oh my god who would have known who would have thought of these type of things good god person uh trying to kick a door down making the people doing the graveyard shift suffer a little no, Olivia, sad. Move back. Sad. no 
He's holding the door. It's fine. That's damage to property. You should go. Go. Can you go get the phone? Can you go get the phone? The phone? Yes. You're doing, you're Wait, touching property. I thought was a large one. Well, that clip ended fast, and is that just me, or was there sirens could be heard right at the end of that? I, I hope it was, and I hope she got caught, because, uh, whoopsie-daisy. <laughs> I, I find it funny how the jaw just didn't break, despite how hard that person clearly was kicking it. It's like, either they've dealt with this before and have had to reinforce the glass, or she is just weak. Here we have an unhappy Chipotle customer, because, uh, the bottom of their bowls is looking very, uh... Dirty to say the least because it's obviously his benches aren't being properly cleaned between food scraps getting everywhere. What are you talking about? I'm talking about how the okay, bottom of my okay. container was dirty. I'll give you your tips. Thank you. Like, y'all treating me like I'm coming here and getting food for free. I'm paying for it. So treat me like a customer. The hell? And the kids' cup. I'll give it to you right now. I don't know what you're paying with. I'm just waiting for you to see what, what you're paying with. The last customer, you bagged their stuff up and then they paid. But with me, you have an attitude. Why is it because I'm black? No. Okay, then. I'm a customer, so treat okay, me like one. Just, just because I asked you to wipe the bottom of my container, you have an attitude? He should clean his station up after each... Look at that shit. That looks crazy. And my food rubbed across that, and you have a it problem with it. It didn't rub across Yes, it food. did. Why does it look like this? And I just wiped it off. It looks like this. Should the bottom of my container look like that? It's You're telling me fine. this is okay? It's fine. No, it's not. Ma'am, I could remake your food. No, you don't have to remake my food, but she shouldn't treat me like that because I'm complaining about something. I understand. I'm sorry about and that. And then she's telling me to pay for something before she even put my stuff in the bag. She shoved everything over to me and told me to bag my own shit. I didn't tell you to bag your own shit. Um, what does it mean when you push my shit over here and then push Did the bag like this? And then I asked you for the chip, everything else, and you had an attitude. Yeah, if I was white or Spanish, you wouldn't be acting like that. Like, I shouldn't have to raise my voice to get good customer service. Anything else? The kids' cup. Fucking attitude. My god, that, uh, the bottom of that bowl is, uh, not good. Like, that, that looks like some of my Lego sets that have built sitting caked with dust. Like, I pick them up, and, like, the, the top is just caked in dust in, like, that similar fashion. Where she's like, there's this line of caked up junk just from it being pushed across. Like, it's insane. Like, how is it that bad to be able to be so visible like that? Like, little bits of scraps, like, let's say a touch of sauce getting in the bottom of the bowl because it got spilled just recently. Whatever. I don't think that particularly matters. But, no, no, no. The, the bottom of that bowl looks so bad it's not even funny is next so we just got a pair of people who get into a very silly argument for ultimately no reason deborah 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 listen deborah deborah i'm i'm deborah listen 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 let me let me let me tell you something you have to say look get out you better listen you better get out of my face deborah i'm telling you you better get up listen you better get out of my face you better get out of my face deborah deborah listen 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 Listen, listen, let me, let me, let me just, you know what, you know what, you know what, Deborah, you know what, Deborah, you know what, Deborah, I, I'm not even going to go there with you, I'm not going to go, you know what, you know what, you can call me what, you know what, you can, you, you know what, she probably, you know what, you know what, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good, whatever you want to call me, whatever you want to, Deborah, 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 as long as you don't put your hands on me, guess what? I ain't worried about you. You guess what? You are staking bit. Guess what? Guess Legends say that she is still standing there saying, you know what, you know what, as well as that's good, that's good over and over again to this day. Absolutely brilliant masterpiece of a story. Who knew that a story could be this goddamn detailed and complicated and also be that goddamn funny? <laughs> <laughs> that was entirely stupid. Here we got a Karen who decided to uh, go to a comedy show and unfortunately one of the co comedians said something that she found slightly offensive so she took it upon herself to go onto the stage and confront the guy for the offensive joke. 
A is what happens. Ma'am, it's a goddamn comedy show. What the f is? You gotta ingest this. What's the problem? What's the problem? Huh? What's the problem? I want to know what the f*** you had to ask me. Y'all damn compelling as fuck. What do you want to know? What do you want to know? I'm a woman. We know you're a woman. We can tell. I'm a man. Good. you people How? How am I insulting people by talking about sexual matters between adults? I'm talking about consenting adult shit. I have sex. I have sex with women. So me being up here describing my life is insulting to you? Then how you how can you speak for the whole crowd and tell me that I'm insulting them? Who is anybody insulting? Sounds like a resounding yes over here. A resounding agreement. That didn't play out how you thought it was going to, did it, Karen? You thought everyone was going to be all on your side for confronting this comedian for his offensive jokes when, no, that's not what happened here. No one particularly cares. Everyone who goes to, like, if you go into a comedy show, you should expect that some jokes you may or may not be somewhat offensive towards you because that's what comedians do. They're going to make jokes that are going to be slightly offensive. Even if it's just self-deprecating jokes against themselves, it might, someone might find that slightly offensive. And the big thing with that, you just gotta learn how to just sit there and enjoy the show. G getting all up, worked up and offended over a joke to the point where you go up onto the stage and attempt to confront the comedian literally only serves a single purpose. To make yourself look like an absolute fool when everyone else, including the entire audience, start laughing at you because of your stupidity. Good job. That was probably far more embarrassing than what it could what it should have been and that's absolutely hilarious here we have a Karen who's upset that there are kids making a racket inside of a fast food restaurant so he she decides to annoy the father and threatens to call the police on them for causing noise pollution what you should, you're, you're just sitting there talking about children I am gonna keep it up what's, 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 what's gonna happen what's gonna happen what's gonna happen go ahead call him oh call him you gonna look dumb because this is a war star right now, how dumb you are right now. You sound dumb telling me my kids are making too much noise, noise pollution. You sound, you sound ignorant. You sound like a fool. Yeah. No, nah, because she's going to talk about because they were playing. That is noise pollution. She's going to call the police. Go ahead. You sound dumb. Thank you, sir. You didn't ask enough. Thank you, sir. Recently for an event that I went to in like another part of Australia, I took like a two hour fl flight down there. We had to deal with a loud crying baby for like the first portion of the flight and yes, it's frustrating, it's annoying, but it's one of those things where you only have to deal with for that small period of time. Yes, it sucks when you have to deal with it, but imagine the parents who have to deal with that consistently. And we all know how kids are. Some kids will just continue to cry and make noise and they don't give an absolute damn what you do to try and stop them. They're going to continue to do it anyway because that's just what they do. It's what babies do. It's what kids do. They like making noise for some unexplainable reason because they just do. And sometimes you're just going to have to suck it up and deal with it. I had a real life Karen today. It was very nice to meet you. It was nice for you to harass me too. Ambassador Nicole Christine Edwards, N I C H O L L E. I will. You have a great. Yeah, you have a great day.
It's a few minutes until this store closes when this retail worker has to approach a customer who's been shopping in the store for several hours at this point, filling her trolley up with a filled brim with various different random items that ultimately she doesn't seem to be intended to buy them. You don't deserve to be treated like what you've been in the store for hours and you got a whole cart of stuff that you're not trying to pay for. That's the problem. But, but you're not though. Because I'm telling you we close and you have been in this store for hours. It's nine minutes before we close and you sitting up here with a cart full of shit that you're not buying. So I'm not ringing you out. Google it. 3210 South Women Street is the address, store 5640. I do not care, because this is ridiculous. Because if you was a worker here, you would be upset too. All this stuff that you done put in this cart that you're not buying. I don't care how you feel. That's disrespectful to us as retail workers, because we have to put your stuff back that you're not paying for. No, you're not. You weren't going to pay for it. If you was going to pay for it, you would have paid for it. If you was going to pay for it, you would have paid for it. Just leave. Just leave. Oh my god. These type of people are literally the worst. I have don't- like, there's so many different type of customers that do really, really benign things. They're just sitting there thinking, oh, it's not my problem to deal with anymore. Like, for example, uh, pretty much all the time, customers will grab a trolley, go inside the store. Sometimes they'll just leave the trolley in the middle of the store and leave. They just leave the trolley there. They don't bother to take it back out with them to put it back in the rack so that someone else can easily use them. No, no, no. They leave them there for someone else to grab and put back, which is just a pretty big annoyance, let alone leaving all their stuff in there. And it gets worse when they have cold items in there. It's like, are you for real? You not only were way too lazy to even bother taking the trolley to the counter itself, you just left it in the middle of the store with cold items that if we don't notice that immediately are things that are going to go off and will no longer be sellable because you're too much of a lazy asshole to even bother to deal with it? Seriously? It's just a huge frustration in retail that so many people just don't seem to care. They just go, oh, yep, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm just going to leave it in the middle of the store. Not my problem anymore. It's dumb. Here we've got an Uber Eats deliverer who uh, couldn't exactly find where a certain person lived, or so they claim. So they decided to stop in the car park of that person's complex and then start eating their food. Uh, the customer caught them in the act. You didn't do a goddamn thing. I just called you. I just screen recorded the whole thing, too, because I was going to make a complaint. So instead of you... Bringing me my food or answering the phone, you decided just to keep it and eat it. Give me my food. The one that's open too, I want my drink, I want all that. I did try to see. No, you didn't. I, did. I, I, I screen recorded the whole thing, sir. I have it, me calling you, me texting you. I screenshot it and screen recorded the whole thing. Kind of so instead of you coming to bring my food and I gave you clear directions. I wrote it in English, I wrote it in Spanish. I'm sorry, maybe I should have wrote it in German too. I wrote it in clear directions. And instead of you responding to any of that, cause even if you had an issue, I said I would just meet you in the front. You didn't have to look for me. I said I would meet you right here in the front. So if you wanted food, you was just there. Why didn't you just order your own food? You was just there. Why didn't you just order your own food? If that's all it was and you just wanted the food. I know you don't think I was, but I was So why out. didn't you respond to any of the messages? No, I, I was I was overwhelmed by messages. I usually get that many. I was trying to If you're lost, why didn't you try to contact me so I can help you find it? I, mean, I was just trying to find the place. How was your trying I'm I mean, just I, I and what way were you trying? Me over there. Because I just rode around here. I left my house and I'm like, okay, I'll meet you in the front. I know it's hard to find places over here. I just rode around in circles. I haven't even seen this car. So you were just parked eating my food. You haven't even made it out the complex and you're already sitting here eating my food. So when were you trying to find me? You haven't made it out the complex and you're sitting right here eating my food. It's not even like you made it anywhere yet. We're still in the complex. What, what's the Because you pissed me off. Hey, you pissed me off. I'm you just sorry. wasted my time and you pissed me off. And I'm going to send this to Uber Eats and whoever else. The first question I'll ask here is why in the world were you still in the, comp the parking complex of that apartment that you're 
were meant to deliver the food. What in your mind decided to think that that was a genius idea? Wouldn't it be best smarter to just drive away a fair bit and then eat the food? Like, genuinely speaking, what the hell were you thinking in general here? It, it just, it, like... Your single brain cell just wasn't firing at all in this entire thing, and you just went, Oh, yep, I can't fire them. I'm not going to bother to try. I'm not even going to go further than this car park here of the apartment complex. I'm going to start eating their food. Oh, they call me? Uh, let's try and make up some excuses and then give up entirely. Like, it's stupid. Here we got a crazy Karen just harassing people at a drive through. Oh, Come on. What's up? What's up? You're right here. What's up? What's up? You want to keep running here? Not you, ma'am. <laughs> right? That's right. I'm not the kind of police on you. I'm not the kind of police on you. I am. Because this Bye. is ridiculous. Bye. What's your name? That's crazy, D. This is she about to go to jail, D. Oh, she about to go to, dude. She about to go to jail. True arbiter of chaos over there, just causing random nonsense and true lawyer of not giving an absolute whatever. <laughs> I want what she's having. I'd like to just be that carefree and do stupid shit and then get myself in a lot of trouble. That'd be some fun. Not really, but. <laughs> that was interesting. Here we have a Karen who's extremely upset that her neighbor is talking to her kids and decides to come running down the street screaming at the top of her lungs to go off at them. Do you want to go there? Cause I tell you right now, I don't give a f***ing no goddamn f***ing video. That's alright. I'm telling you right now, talk to my f***ing kids again. Talk to them again. You little no. son of a bitch. Pretend to be brave coming over here I don't now. give a f***ing. Take that video! Context matters, and I'm highly curious in what happened prior to this clip, but unfortunately we don't have that information. And I'm also going to assume that she probably mooned the camera and that's why the clip cut off where it did. Here we have a person of the church deciding to uh, body shame a person who goes to their church on a regular basis without realizing they're being recorded. Here's what happens. She's a chubby girl. She's got a dress on that's appropriate. It comes down to about top of her knees. So you're sitting here calling me fat? Oh, you don't think you are? No, because I f***ing love who I am. I'm Excuse sorry. No, you get, get the love f out of my face. I don't have to. And don't swear at me like that. I don't give a sh I do. That's your problem. I do give a sh but you don't, obviously. <laughs> don't come back on that stage with those shorts. I'm warning you. Who are you? Who are you? Who? You read my name. I see that, but who are you to tell me what I'm supposed to Lower do? No, voice. get the f out of my face. Quit swearing at me. Get out. I am 19 years old and I can do whatever I want! Really? Yes! Try it. Okay, bye! 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 Because guess what? I've been recording this entire thing and I will show my parents that I will never come back to this church because of how much you are disrespectful! You are so disrespectful! Look, I don't want to be one to assume things here, especially in this situation, but this just sounds like something that's been going on for quite a while. Like, this is just a continuous pattern from this person that this has been occurring for quite a while, considering how easily this person behind the camera just completely started to break down. Like, you can hear it in her voice, like, 
the emotional tension is extremely high for her. It, it feels like something has happened on multiple different occasions, and this is finally her trying to get back at her by deciding that this time I'll record you doing your usual shenanigans. And also, I'm so glad the other people who seem to work at the church there really quickly came to, to her defense and told her, hey, just, just go back to the bathroom, we'll deal with this now. Like, man, that, like, really good from those people, genuinely speaking. In next clip, we get a racist Karen at a shopping store. You, you heard me. You asked, I asked you what country you're from. That says exactly what it says what over there. What you say? It doesn't say that. Did you say what country I'm from? Yeah. I said that you can't understand that English written right up there. Miss, I have lived in America just like you did. Now get out my store. Problem. Oh yeah. Boo. Again, it's a dollar twenty cents. Boo. You're white trash. White trash. White trash. Sure we are. I love how the first thought from a lot of Karens is when they see someone who is of color or a different race than just being a white Caucasian person. The stumble on some form of English. It's like, oh, what country are you from? Oh, you don't speak English? Oh, it's like, even though I speak in English, <laughs> far out, that's a great example of that. Even though I've literally only spoken English my entire life, I still stumble on the simplest of damn things because herder, I'm human. Whoa. We've got someone who seems like to be an undercover employee in Walmart who's potentially there to observe people to make sure people aren't stealing or other things on those lines, who's been a bit overbearing towards this one customer, especially after they take a photo of their partner, apparently, inside this Walmart. And so they decide to, like, hey, you can't do that here. And it continues to escalate until the manager comes in and kicks them out of the Walmart for recording. Manager, you don't need this. Oh, I'm going to stop taking picture and video and all that, man. Okay, I'm taking video now. You said what? Now I'm taking video. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to stop videoing me. Okay, yeah. who are you? Video of the manager. Call are you manager? Okay, let's go get in customer service line. She's not to be helped. She's getting kicked out, so she can just stand in this line. It's not for me anyway. It's I for him. I don't care who it's for. I'm getting kicked out for walking in. <laughs> Clown. So I'm confused. He works here? Uh-huh. He always bothers everybody when you walk in. Okay, go return your thing. But he's not in the I know. That's why I'm recording it. Can you call a manager over here? Because he always harasses everybody. I can oh, call the manager over here. Please call the manager. Yep. I already please, had a call again. Manager? Yes, Liz, please. Okay. Somebody. He always harasses everybody. He harassed Brad, too. Uh, I'm confused. Uh, you, you work there. What does that mean, sir? He's asking if you work there. Uh, obviously, I do if I'm calling the manager, bro. But you're just regular clothes. I don't care. You're regular clothes. What does that mean? I don't work here. So? What is that? Where are you getting at? Do I have to have a Walmart best store to work here? Or... Or what? Anything. Can you come to the um, service desk, please? All right. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen again. He service just service. always bothers everybody. Right. So he does work here. I know. Sure. But he harasses everybody as soon as they walk. I didn't in. say anything to you, man. Okay, I took a picture. I, right. How do you Why know I took a picture, a picture of you? Of I was taking a picture of okay, him. Come on, man. We ain't going to do that. How do you know I wasn't taking right. a picture I of my don't brother? Care at this point. You are always disrespectful. We don't care at this point. I asked you not to shout. I'm you always once, disrespectful. And now you, no, we don't care. Okay. Uh, we're on the okay, good. And I assume he's an assistant manager. No. No. Once again. He's a little theme for shoplifters or something. Oh. I asked him what my name was last time. He lost probably doesn't. Theft he, he probably doesn't even remember me honestly because it's been like many, yeah. many months. He does remember you. No. He thought I was somebody else, so I asked him what my name was. Oh. Yeah. 
Right. And then we had a big right. problem last time. Right, right. right. And then I still bought right. what I needed right. and I still left after right. that. Right, just right. All of that. But right now you're going to get kicked out and not come back on our premises. That's fine. Please tell me what's going on. I kicked her before she. I caught her. He's never kicked me. Put the phone down. And she's He's always video camera me. Last time her, she came in with her other gentleman that was doing the same thing. I never came in with anybody. She would not stop video camera me. And she's okay. taking pictures. I do not like the pictures taken. If I asked her multiple times to leave, I asked her multiple yeah, times to if you can't put not camera me. I don't understand what the camera's for or the pictures. Okay, I was taking a picture of my brother at You the were door, taking a picture of me, and he got all upset. right? You I can actually go leave watch the store, the video man. When I I'm gonna actually leave the store. And if you're gonna be a company her, you cannot shop here either, buddy. Okay. You never kicked me out But before. now you are getting officially kicked you out You confused me with someone else, right. and but I asked you what you, my name was. you're here, and you hear us. An and assistant manager. manager came now last time and told you the same right. thing because you, you went and double checked. So, no, you have never kicked me out. You don't even know what my name is to know if you kicked me out. Like I said, I've kicked her out before. That was the first thing. He never kicked me out. But when I walked up, you had the phone like you were recording. So at this point. I was recording him. Yes. Because he's going crazy on me. I mean, at this point, last I time thought, I was shopping, okay, are you going to let me speak? Just ran off me. Well, at this point, I walked up and you were recording, so I'm going to ask you to leave at this point. Okay, so you can't record inside Walmart. It's disrespectful. Someone asked you. No, you, you can't. You can't record another person without their consent. You can't give a picture. So you're telling me I, can call I can't take right a now. picture. Just Would you like me to call law enforcement and Stop. take it bigger Stop. than Stop. Walmart? Are you a celebrity that I need Stop. to check to see if Excuse I can publish me. a I'm picture? Sorry, at this point, go ahead and escort yourself out of the building. Okay. I know. That's fine. And you're on camera, too. So I'll be reporting this to Walmart. That's okay. Good. That's fine. Ma'am, be respectful and stop recording me. I'm not, actually. Have a good day. I can stop. record that's, you. That's against the law. But I no, won't, and if you touch my right. phone, you'll have some problems. It's fine, Please. you're already on it. So out the you door, don't even know what you're kicking me out for. I, I, Ma'am, it's California. I have to say that I have the right. You actually don't because I didn't do anything right to you. We have the right to refuse service to anybody. You don't. So no. please escort. You have to have a reason. Ma'am. And that's why I'm I do not you in your name, Elizabeth. Ma'am, I do not have to have that's a reason. That's perfectly fine. I've asked you I very will be recording you. Do not record because me. Because you have no reason to kick me out. Taking a picture. We have the right to refuse service Walmart to anybody. Inside Walmart is perfectly legal. So Ma'am, ma ma I've asked you to not record me. And I've asked you to leave. I will be publishing this. Five times. Ma'am, I've corporate. asked you to leave five times. That's perfectly fine. Ma'am, I've asked and you to leave I've five times. And I've asked you times. to get out of my face, too. Please escort the building. out of my face, Please escort the building. Yes, I will. Ma'am, please escort the building. And I'll still be Escort recording. the building. They think that they could do so. I can't wait for Tom to come and they still want to Thank you. You have a great day. God bless. Thanks. I'll be reporting you. Okay. And you. Oh. Bye. And I'll be right back. So I think one thing that should be clarified to be very clear that I feel a lot of people don't quite understand. It's not illegal to record in Walmart or any other form of sh shops that are open to the public like that, but because they're a private business, they do reserve the right to kick you out and enforce their policy of you can't record with a mobile phone or a camera inside of a Walmart. You can't take photos, you can't do that inside of a Walmart whatsoever. So they do have the rights to kick you out on that merit alone. Now, is it wrong for you to record in potential instances where you'll feel threatened and stuff like that? No, but you should always expect at the end of the day that they're going to ask you to leave. They can't ask you to delete the stuff or other things on those lines, but they can and they fully are able to ask you to leave the store. It's well within their rights. You can't just say, oh, but you need to have a reason to kick me out. They do. You're recording inside of their premises and they withhold the rights to kick you out for doing so. And it's as simple as that. There's nothing more to it. I'm sorry. Here we have a couple of upset neighbors because of some late night car noises. I'm yeah. calling the cops next time that happens. Mm -hmm. I have two kids. It takes me two hours to get them to sleep. I'm gonna lose my damn mind. That, that's not, that was not me. I don't know why you're mad. I know. Don't, don't look, look at us. We're, I have no idea. We are in our night clothes. Whoever it was, that was me your Me too. I'm, I'm sleeping. I, was, I got yeah, scared you, too. Yeah, you were? Yeah, I'm, I'm oh, in I my room tell. sleeping. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not sleeping. Neither are my kids. Yeah. So okay, stop bro. it. I don't get I'm, why you're so I'm mad. I'm calling the cops next Why time. do you, you, do you have kids? Uh, two hours to put my kids to You don't know that. Do you have kids? I have two hours to put my kids to sleep. That shit is not gonna fly. Well, that, okay. that wasn't me. Why are you I, mad? I, I'm just telling you. That's it's not going to fly. on this street. No, no I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with you. I don't know why you're yelling at me right because now. Because our have, kids slip next door. I have door. two children that are infants 
who have to go to school in the morning. It takes me two hours to put them in a bed. Yeah. Okay? So that shit is not going to fly with me. Okay? I'm going to call the cops next time. On who? On you. On you. I'm telling you it wasn't me. I don't okay. care who it was. <laughs> so you I call cops on me then. Because okay. I didn't call it. I'm going to call it on your friend. I don't care. I'm calling the cops. A thing to note is that in the comments of the original TikTok, this guy fully admits that, yes, it was him who who was making the noise. It was definitely him, which just leads to a few different things I have here. First off, infants go to school? Does that a slip of the tongue, or is it just like a misrepresentation of what's actually happening? Like, yeah, you might be taking your kids to a kindergarten or daycare or something along those lines, but describing it as school is funny to say the least but i'm not going to look too much into that one to be completely honest and yeah if you're purposely revving your car that you know is loud in the middle of the night then yeah yeah this is deserved definitely your your buddy if you got a loud car and you're revving it purposely at night like buddy i don't know what else to tell you if you're getting home and you're just your car is just naturally noisy yeah, I can't really get up too upset, too upset from you. That's just life. Like, there is, like, uh, someone who drives a Nissan a Z around here, and sometimes when that's getting home late at night, you can hear it just purring around. It's beautiful, but at the same time, noisy. <laughs> but that is what it is. It's not the end of the world. Now, if that guy was purposely revving it, then that'd be another question. But he's not. He's getting home. This clip's a very intriguing one. So this seems to... So this lady here gets fired by the end of this clip for laughing in someone else's face. And now, this seems to be a bit of a context matters type thing. So according to what the manager's been told in the situation, this other person said, oh, so you don't want to work also it's like you oh so you'd want to do this and do this and help us do work and apparently according to that guy this worker here behind the camera laughed at him for that one according to the worker here she states that it's like oh so you don't want to do work and she laughed at him for that and that's why she's getting fired from this job let's just let the clip go and i'll get back to you, you guys need me to do i'm willing to help mm -hmm. That's Most what definitely. you said. Most definitely. So I said, great, I'm going to hire you as a food service worker. Mm -hmm. There may be time to time where you help out in Starbucks, but your primary role is going to be food service worker. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's a miscommunication between you and I, which is fine. Um, so if you don't want to do the job. I'm, well, I'm going to finish talking. I, I ain't trying to interrupt you. You just anything. did interrupt me, though. Yeah, but I'm, I just want to let you know I do want to say something afterwards. I apologize for interrupting you. Okay, so, what sorry. would you like to say? No, I'm going to let you finish. No, I'm done. I okay. don't really have anything else to say. Like you said, we did have some miscommunication, which I tried to, which I was telling them. I said, okay, that's a conversation for me and Justin to have as far as getting together and me and him talking about my position because I was, I was under the oppression of one thing and they was, y'all, you told them another. So that's why I told them, I'm gonna have a conversation with Justin about it and me and him will get that straight. I just need to know what y'all need done. What needs to be done? And Marco was continuing about, about he was saying that, oh, you act like you don't want to work, da 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 and Okay, so let me just say one thing. Mm -hmm. okay. We're here to open this account. It's a Saturday. I don't want to be here on a Saturday. And I don't have time for this type of interaction, like having this conversation. Time. Exactly. So either you're going to work and you're going to stop with the drama. I'm not causing any drama. That's uh, you've been sitting in this conference room wasting time for, what, an hour and a half he now? He told me to go sit down, sir. I'm, I asked, kept asking him what okay. needs to be done. I told him I didn't want to go sit so down. So do you want to work here or not? Yes, that's why I'm still here. If I didn't, I would have already left. Okay. So can you, if that's the case, I don't want any more drama, which I feel like is not going to happen. I, I don't think... I don't think that's going to work out, Phoenix. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not causing any drama. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I, I kept asking him, even after the whole conversation, I was over it. Like, I'm like, okay, I understand that. He told you one thing. I was told another. I'll talk to Justin. What needs to be done? Because, like I told you, I had a funeral to go to. If I didn't want to be here, if I didn't want to come work, I would have let... Okay, no, that's not the story he told me. That's what I'm saying. And that's the thing. If it's, it's miscommunication, I was... I told I was, you laughed in his face. When that's, he asked you to help out in the I'm kitchen. No, that's why I'm trying to get to the conversation. That's why I'm letting you know. It didn't happen that way. It wasn't because I told him that I didn't want to do a certain thing and I laughed at him because of that. I laughed because he was saying that I didn't want to work. And I laughed because I'm like, okay, if I didn't want to work, I wouldn't have came here today. That's why I laughed, but I felt disrespected. Okay, but Phoenix, I don't want to waste any more time. Can I please just have your badge? This isn't going to work out. I'm sorry. I didn't even. Okay. Thank you. 
I'm a stickler for accepting that usually when there's two sides of a story, the reality of the story tends to be in the middle. Tends to be. Sometimes someone's just straight up lying because they don't want to look bad. And if that's the case, well then, well, that kind of sucks and that does, that's very unfortunate. But I'd say it's probably somewhere in the middle here. And I'm going to be honest here, I feel like firing a person because they had a little giggle at something along these lines is a bit stupid, if I'm completely honest. Purely because I'm, like, for me, I, when I'm a little nervous and, like, I do a bit of nervous laughing, like, I laugh at things a lot because over the years I've grown less to be more, and I, I've decided to stop being annoyed or angry at situations and more just laugh at it now. Which does lead to things like this, where you laugh at something completely ridiculous and it gets you in a bit of trouble because you probably should not have laughed at that. But ultimately, it's just your way of handling things to make your life easier. It seems like this manager just realized that, ah, there's going to be some issues here and I'm not going to be bothered to actually work these kinks out. I don't want to figure out what this other guy's been doing. I just want to keep with the status quo because it's easier for me. So, ah, uh, bye-bye. I don't want you in the job anymore. But... I will ask, what do you guys thought on this one? What's your thoughts about this one in the comments below? Here we have an old lady who uh, gets herself into a bit of an accident and seems to be a bit off the nut case here, you know? So let, let's just see this interesting interaction, right? Damaged! My car is damaged. Is where? Is right here. Car? If you want to see, you oh, can come over here. Oh, shit! Why are you hitting my car, lady? Because it's not damaged, you bitch! Would you tell her to get away from me? She's crazy. Just took, you know, took me to, you know, and it's not damaged. I mean, usually what you're supposed to do you don't, you don't in an accident to, yeah. is we exchange information. Bitch. You are a crazy bitch. Is she driving away? Have we let him? Yeah. Huh? I got it now. She just drove away. I know there wasn't any visible damage, but isn't that just a hit and run right there? They just left the scene of an accident without providing any information of anything whatsoever. And also, is it just me or did she almost hit that Mitsubishi up there? Like, she was going to, to be driving head on into it until last moment, slightly swerves into the side, into her side of the lane. Because, you know, she was driving down the middle of the car park lot. You know, these are people's lanes, buddy. You gotta go into your lane. It's not just your road. <laughs> what a nutcase. Here we've got another one of those, well, very entitled people who decide to uh, claim a car park by standing physically in it. Here's a clip. have a law just put in place like saying hey if someone is blocking a car park by standing in it can we just like slowly push them with our car can that just be allowed no that won't ever be a thing because that will actually hurt people <laughs> like it will, might actually kill someone but hey uh i wouldn't be saying i wouldn't say they don't deserve it <laughs> And hey, if you want expert level tactics on how to claim a car park for yourself, shove a trolley in there. A lot of people are too lazy to move car move trolleys in order to get into a car park. There are some that will, but most people won't. Or shopping cart. 
both the, the same thing. We call them the trolleys here. Oh, oh well. This clip is a lot, to be completely honest. There's a lot of moving parts to do with this story here. and requires a lot of things. So, I think the base to start us off here is that we're 12 minutes before this plane is set to take off. And the people who've gotten here, their tickets have literally just been given away to someone else as they were as they were lining up, going to go on the gate themselves. So now we've ended up in this section here. I'll go into more details after the clip, but I'll let you watch it first. I'm sorry, what? No, ma'am. I'm not going to. So you're exactly gonna you're gonna give our seats out away. for them? I am right here. I am right here, ma'am. Okay, I'm lower recording. Your tone. Oh, lower your tone. You're giving our seats to them? Yes, I am. Okay. It is 12 minutes and 27 What's seconds. What's 12 minutes? It's too open. Here. It's too open. We're still it's open. We're here, I'm executive you platinum. You, you know that, right? One, two, three. I'm executive platinum here. I understand that. Yeah, and system. you're giving... And yet you're so giving on, my ticket to somebody else? So wait, wait. The plane is open. You're just giving our seats out. Right. And you as an executive platinum know the rules. No, right. you're giving our seats out. Right. Yes, we are. Yes. It's still open. You can it's let it in. If it was closed, you wouldn't be giving right. it to anybody else. If it was closed, no, you're you wouldn't live be giving on Instagram. It. Just say it. American Airlines is giving our tickets out. They let them in. We are just behind them, and they give our seats out. Can you believe that? Are you with our kid and everything here? Some additional information to the story, just so you have all the information. Apparently, they were there two hours before the flight's time itself. Unfortunately, there was only one TSA agent, so it took over an hour to get through the line, but then her disabled child needed to go use the restroom. They still checked in. Apparently, they still checked in within that before the 30-minute window, but uh, that's what they're saying here. Anyhow, moving further into it with extra information here is that from what I can gather from other people is that there is a 15 minute domestic flight cutoff. The gate agents have a very short window to clear stand, like their standby passages waiting to go onto planes that have extra seats that are not been used either because the people who are meant to use those seats did not show up to their flight on time or B there's just extra seats that they just didn't end up filling so these the final 15 minutes before departure is used to get any extra people to fill up the plane that are waiting for a flight at some point beforehand and if you fail to get there before that 15 minute window your seat must be given might be given away and from what we can tell here is that they were in the line and the people in front of them got given their tickets like because they're in the line of extra people who need to get on a plane and unfortunately their tickets got given away which is a very unfortunate thing because the airline staff here are doing what they're meant to do in these situations like they can't just take back the tickets they just gave to these people who are also looking for a fly but yes it also causes a massive inconvenience to these people here who brought those tickets and were meant to go on this flight it's from what I can gather with the comments of this, apparently it's made extremely clear that if you're not present at least 15 minutes before boarding, your seat will be given away to standby passengers. And once that ticket is confirmed to be someone else's, there is nothing you can do beyond that. So ultimately here, I say the people in this main situation here have done what I feel like was probably the right thing to do in the situation. They're rightfully upset and angry about the situation, but the staff are just doing their job. There's not much more that can be done about that. I feel like the biggest problem here is clearly that check-in section. How are you spending two hours in a check-in area? Like, I kid you not, I've never had to spend that long in a check-in area in my multiple different flights I've done over the years. And I was coming back from Melbourne a few, two weekends ago, the same weekend F1 was happening. The Monday I went back was the same day everyone who went to the F1 was going back. Everyone who went to the Game Expo was going back. And trust me when I tell you this, the airport was packed with hundreds upon hundreds of people. But you know what happens here? There are like 40 to 50 different self check in areas. Like, you go up to like these clusters of self point, like, hey, you put in your name, you put in the flight that you're meant to be taken, or you put in the code that you have from your app or from your email. It gives you your ticket, it gives you your baggage slip to tap on, slap on your bag itself, and then you drop off your checked in bagging, which there are like 
20, 30, 40 different slots of self-automated one that you do yourself. And there's also multiple people from the airline who are redirecting people to any empty ones, redirecting people to the ones that have got people there to do it themselves, like the international ones, if that's necessary. Like, it's clearly like the biggest problem here is that check-in area is absolutely garbage. You shouldn't be spending that long in the check-in zone. I, I, I've never experienced that length of a check-in, and I've gone through airports in busy, busy time frames. This one's a particularly funky clip. Basically what's happened here is this is the third time this person's come to get their hair done at this place here, as m pretty much every single time she's complained about the expense of the actual haircut itself. So this time around, the person decided to call out the client for this exact behavior. Price, but I also know that is not a place I'm willing to spend money on. Right, but like there's also tact, there's tact. Like, I buy art and I get art, but I don't ever go to the artist and say, this shouldn't cost this much because I could do this also. Like, that's not something I would ever do. I wouldn't say that. At or that it's so most, easy. I would say, this is gorgeous and crap I and wish I could afford. This. That's that's all you have to say. Like, And usually I do, but usually I will tell them because I feel like they might find value in what I I know, say. but this is now the third time you've come and booked an appointment with me and told me I like haircuts, but I don't want to pay you this much money. I and the prices I, are there. They're I right there for you guys. Was doing that at just for me at this point. Given I have said it before, it's 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 the mental block on top of everything but, else. Yes, but I have other stylists in between. If you're like I like I just told you. I mean, I'm here to help out everybody, but I have other stylists who will be able to take care of you. when if it's a hard month. We have pay what you can days, so I tell people to stay on social media. So there's days that you can come in you and book. Told me that, and and I've never gotten a notification of those. How do I, need I don't, to make sure? I don't do them that often. I post them on my social media. So I will start sending out emails so that people can, because I've only done them twice. I just wanted to see how it worked. Yeah. And they do. People do appreciate because those days. Because that right. would be awesome. It might end up being a horrible time, and I wouldn't be able to make it, but that's on me. Right, all right, all right. But yes. Haircuts can be expensive. Heck, over the past few years, I've watched like the average, like just to get my hair trim, it's gone from, I think it was like 26 bucks a few years ago to now I'm paying like $40, $50 just to get a haircut nowadays. And that's just consistent with pretty much every barber and hairdresser in my local area, as well as driving a little further away, which then has fuel costs and further on and further more. It's just... Like, yeah, it's expensive, but that's just a factor of life. If you don't want to do your hair yourself, which isn't that expensive, it's like what? Here in Australia, 100 bucks for clippers and your partner helping you do that and maybe some decent scissors or something along those lines, depending on how you get your hair cut. It is cheaper to do it yourself if you're willing to go through the effort, but that takes time and effort and also buying the equipment, which isn't that expensive. But again, time and effort. If you want to save time and effort, Expect it to cost a little bit of your money, and haircuts aren't cheap, especially if you want to go for some more unique hairstyles that isn't just simply cutting your hair. Here we have an Australian business owner appealing to some very interesting tactics when it comes to dealing with one-star reviews. He was screaming for his life. I feel illegal. like... Is that... Go to the Absolutely. police. Go to the what police. Did is Please go to the police. Don't worry. We're Please we're, go we're, to the police. Don't worry. We already have. Okay, that's great. I'll wait for them to it. call me. Yeah, absolutely. I'll you wait should. for them to you call should. me. Thank you. You're welcome, darling. Anything else? Good yeah, you're fat. Your and you're really, really ugly. ugly. I'm fat and yeah, ugly. Fat and ugly. Yeah, you're horrible. At least you're... The horrible you're person I'm a horrible person who's fat and ugly. I'll put that I'll put that on your business page and see how people feel about you telling people they're fat and ugly. Fat and ugly. I'm hideous. You're hideous. That's fine. If somebody as gross as you wants to tell me I'm hideous, I'm doing something right. How can you... How can you... You're, you're literally come to me and stepped in my face no, and you expect me. Stop, you came for me. Please came for me. You guys leave my business. No, that's fine. This is fine. No, no, that's fine. And you are a liar. Hi, please. Don't. Please. Just personal distance. No. What do you mean? mean? She you came for my business. So that means you're allowed to step in my face. I will be going to the police. Don't worry. That's fine. I'll be. I'll be. You understand what the turn up is? I don't think you have a multi-million dollar business. I didn't say I do. What's your bank account? Yeah, because I hang out with dogs. Well, I have a zero dollar bank account. She's putting people down based on their success. That's your problem. Oh yeah, I'm really jealous. I'm really jealous of your. Yeah. What's wrong with what I'm wearing? I'm at a park. What else should I be wearing? Oh, did I say interesting tactics? No, no. I just been abused. <laughs>
I mean, there's really, there's no way to really sum this up. Like, yeah, maybe the one star review wasn't a genuine good one star review, and they had no reason to do that. But uh, they definitely do now, especially with uh, this experience. And the clips now posted online, so this is probably going to do far more harm to your small business than what would have occurred for a simple one star review that you may or may not have gotten. Like, the, the, I just don't get the idea behind this. It's like, oh, this person gave me a one star review. Let me meet them in public and then go off of them in their faces. Like, that is a bright idea. It, obviously, it's not. It, it's backfired. This clip's now here on this channel. Good job. You, you've done amazing. Typical Australian. Don't know when to stop. Wait a minute.